By now, most of you must have heard the unfortunate news that Fujifilm has once again discontinued the production of one of their film stocks, the Fujifilm Pro 400H. Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I would like to take some time to reminisce about my experience with using the Fujifilm Pro 400H. Fujifilm Pro 400H was first released in 2004 as part of what was once Fujifilm's line of professional color negative films. The Fuji Color Pro line was designed by Fujifilm for wedding, portrait, and fashion photography, where accurate rendition of skin tones were essential. Aside from offering a wide exposure latitude and fine grain, Pro 400H was also developed with a proprietary fourth cyan color layer, which supposedly improved its color reproduction. But it's actually because of this fourth film layer why Fujifilm is forced to discontinue this film. Apparently, it's become really hard to procure the raw materials to produce this fourth layer, so I guess that's why it's going the way of the dodo. Anyway, Fujifilm has been axing their line of film stocks for a while now, even if there's been a resurgence of people going back to film photography. I really shouldn't be surprised that they discontinued another one. It's really just a matter of time. However, it was just a little bit surprising to me because it seems like the sales of Pro 400H wasn't bad at all. Rather, it seems to have a solid following online. Pro 400H is well known for its subdued pastel colors, when overexposed, it gives off this light and airy vibe which I really like. I first used Fujifilm Pro 400H back in 2018. I rated the film at 400 ISO and my initial results were quite underwhelming. I wanted to get the pastel vibe but I didn't know that you have to overexpose the film by at least two stops to get that. The photos weren't bad though, they just looked normal. After doing some more research, I decided to give the film another chance and sure enough, I started to fall in love with it after I learned how to properly expose it. It sort of became my go-to film for portraiture. That said, I sometimes felt like the 35mm version of the film wasn't giving me the same resolution compared to Kodak Portrait 400. Now there's a lot of reason why this could be, but I found that some of the photos I have lack detail, especially if the lighting wasn't great. This wasn't a problem with the 120 version of the film though. I think it really shined in 120, and I would say that it's probably my favorite 120 film. Which is why I'm sad to see it go. Sure, it's not as popular as Kodak's Porsche line, and there's a lot of people who don't even give a damn that it's being discontinued, which I can sort of see why, 
both Pro 400H and Portra can produce the pastel tones everybody raves about, but a lot more film photographers use Portra because it seems to be the more versatile one. But while there are those who won't be missing the Fujifilm Pro 400H, losing another major film stock just really shows the dire state of film photography. Personally, I've used a lot more rolls of Pro 400H than Portra 400, and I will miss it very much. But perhaps there's still hope. If you've been following Fujifilm's antics for a while now, um, this discontinuation echoes that of the Neopan Acros 100. In 2018, Fujifilm announced that they couldn't get the raw materials for the beloved black and white film anymore, hence they had to discontinue its production. However, a year later, they released a new version, the Neopan Acros 2. This new version tries to stay true to the original while using a new formula. And sure, it's manufactured by Harman or Ilford in the UK, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories regarding its authenticity, but whatever, Acros was revived. Now, I know it's probably harder to outsource color film to other companies, uh, because I don't really know of any other film producers aside from Kodak Alaris. Um, however, Fujifilm might be able to revive the film using a different formula and perhaps make a new version out of it. I'm staying optimistic. Nevertheless, if this is truly the end of Pro 400H, then I guess this is goodbye. I'm just glad that I rediscovered film photography early enough that I was still able to try a film stock such as this one. It has its flaws, but I will forever chase the iconic way that it renders cool and airy pastel tones. So what about you? Are you sad to see the Fujifilm Pro 400H go, or do you not care at all? <laughs> I hope that you can still see it as a loss for the film community in general, even if you don't use it. Comment your thoughts down below. That said, thank you very much for watching this video, especially if you've reached this far. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers! So what about you? Are you sad to see Fujifilm Pro 400H go or do you not care at all? <laughs> Come on Misha.